In this video, we're going to see channel length modulation. In short form, it is called CLM of a MOSFET. Before we jump into channel length modulation, we'll first see how the characteristics of a N-channel enhancement MOSFET were in different situations. This is how the ID versus VDS characteristics of a MOSFET were when VGS was equal to a constant value, let's say which is VGS1. So I've drawn these figures, taking VGS is fixed, which is VGS1, and the first figure represents when VDS is positive and it is small. So in that case, we had the entire channel, and the current that was flowing was somewhere here for the given VDS, which is very small, and the current was increasing linearly. Coming to the second situation where VDS was increased, as the potential was higher on the drain side, there was reverse bias and depletion region increased and the channel thickness reduced or the concentration of electrons in the channel reduced. Due to which the resistance increased and of course potential increased hence we had current increasing at a rate which is less compared to this region. And then when we moved on to a point where VDS was equal to VGS1 minus VTH which was in fact called the overdrive voltage. When we applied that potential, so the potential here was equal to VGS1 minus VTH, in which case the channel gets pinched off. So we have seen till this point, we said that the channel wouldn't allow any extra current to flow beyond the current that is flowing at pinch off. Hence, we took the characteristics to be constant beyond this pinch off point. But in reality, the current beyond this overdrive voltage is not going to be constant as we discussed. So now we will see why this current wouldn't be constant beyond the overdrive voltage of VDS. Let's say VDS is above the VGS1 minus VTH here. Let's say we have some voltage here. Now the question is what will happen to this channel? Let's just say we have we apply a potential by increasing this beyond VGS1 minus VTH. What will happen is, here the potential wouldn't be VGS1 minus VTH, it will be this value. If the potential is this value here, as the potential increases from source to drain, there should be a point at which the potential should become VGS1 minus VTH along the channel. In which case, at that point, the channel should get pinched off. And if you take that scenario and draw the figure, this is how it will look where we are assuming the potential that is applied at VDS is greater than VGS1 minus VTH, which is plus, let's say, the delta V. I'm taking that this is the point at which the potential across the channel would become VGS1 minus VTH, which means this delta V would be dropping across this point where the entire channel here is completely pinched off. In this case, if you look at the channel, it looks as if the channel is existing only till this point. When we started, we assumed the channel length is L. But now the channel length seems to be reduced because of the extra voltage that we applied beyond the overdrive voltage. In this case, what would happen is the electrons that are coming from source to drain, when they enter into this pinched off region, the electrons would get accelerated because we have applied a potential which is higher now, which means the electric field should be higher compared to this scenario. So the electrons that actually come here, let's say the delta V potential is getting dropped here. And at this point, at this point, the potential would be VGS1 minus VTH in the channel. Now electrons, when they get accelerated, which means the rate of flow of carriers would increase now, assuming the velocity of the electrons haven't come to the saturation velocity, in which case the current would increase as we increase the potential. So hence the current should actually be increasing beyond the overdrive voltage and it is not going to be constant like this. So let me show that particular curve here which would look like this, the curve in the red color. But of course these two curves are for a fixed VGS which is VGS1. Now why is this called channel length modulation? Because if you look at here the channel seems to be this value which is less than the actual channel length. Now as we increase this potential beyond even this value, this point would move here, which means from here onwards, it will be like this. 
a single line kind of. But if we reduce this potential, this point would move to here. Which means the channel length here would be actually getting modulated, increasing and decreasing with respect to the drain to source potential. Hence it is called the channel length modulation. So let me say this is with CLM and this is without CLM. In fact, this point reminds me of uh, the Tom Cruise movie, which is Night and Day, in which he says, with me, without me, with me, without me. In this case, we can say this is with CLM, the current is higher, without CLM, the current is less. With CLM, without CLM. Now let's find out how would the current equation be with channel and modulation. To find that out, first I'm taking the current equation in saturation region without CLM. Now we know that the channel length has reduced. So we're going to take the L is equal to L prime. In fact, L prime is equal to L minus delta L. Of course, this delta L is a function of VDS. That's why it is called channel length modulation. So this can be written equal to L taking common 1 minus delta L over L, which is normalized value here. And of course, this delta L over L will be directly proportional to VDS. So we can equate this with a proportionality constant called lambda times VDS. So this can be equated again as L times 1 minus lambda VDS. We'll substitute this value here, in which case ID would be equal to mu C ox prime W by L. So L is written as L times 1 minus lambda VDS. So this will be in the denominator. I'm going to take this in the numerator so that it becomes 1 minus lambda VDS power minus 1. 1 minus lambda VDS power minus 1 times VGS minus VTH whole square over 2. Taking lambda times VDS is very less than 1, we can rewrite this expression where if you see lambda units would be volt inverse because this is normalized, even this entire time should be unitless. If this is volt, this is volt inverse, hence we should not be having units. Lambda is volt inverse. So this is equal to ID times 1 plus lambda VDS where ID is the current without channel length modulation. So let's put this, this is ID. Of course, this ID is different. So just for convenience, I'm putting a prime here, which is a modified ID, which is the drain current with channel length modulation is equal to the drain current without channel length modulation times one plus lambda VDS. So let me summarize here. This is channel length modulation, and this is without channel length modulation. And of course, going forward, I wouldn't be writing this as ID prime. Simply, I'll write ID is equal to the entire equation. 